Hi everyone and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Dr. Sid Cowley and I work at the intersection of Fusion and AI at the FIA member DigiLab. Today is Wednesday the 16th of October and I'm here to give you your Fusion News Roundup. Stories today include 1. Zap Energy shows off its new Fusion Power prototype, Century. 2. Fusion, the web, and electric planes. How spin-offs from big science are transforming the world. 3. Stopping off-the-wall behavior in fusion reactors. And 4. Japan's Tokamak sets world record, achieves plasma volume of 160 cubic meters. And, of course, I'll have some bonuses at the end for you. 1. Zap Energy shows off its new fusion power prototype, Century. Our first story comes from TechCrunch and covers an exciting new facility unveiled by FIA member Zap Energy. Now, Zap is pursuing quite an interesting method of fusion confinement, which is known as the Z-Pinch. The idea here is to send loads of electric current through a column of plasma, and the intense electromagnetic forces that result from that current will squish the plasma down to high pressures for a short amount of time. The idea has been around for a while, but Zap proposes a unique improvement to the concept, stabilizing the plasma with something called shear flow. Now, this specific story today covers the first public announcement of the Century facility and comes off the heels of Zap raising 130 million US dollars in a Series D investment round. But what is Century? Well, rather than a fundamental plasma physics experiment to demonstrate fusion performance, the facility is meant to test technologies and the integrated systems that would enable a Z-pinch fusion power plant. One of these technologies is the demonstration of continuous and frequent pulsed power, since Zap's power plant will need to squeeze columns of plasma down around 10 times per second for months on end. And so far, Century is well on its way to demonstrating this capability. In fact, a few weeks after it was turned on this summer, Century fired 1,080 consecutive pulses. Though these integrated system tests may not be the most catching headline news, they are just as important as, say, achieving fusion gain. According to Benj Conway, co-founder and CEO of Zap Energy, we think that doing all of this in parallel, everything all together, all at once type thing, is the fastest way to actually deliver a commercial product. Century is the incarnation of that. Two, fusion, the web, and electric planes. How spin-offs from big science are transforming the world. Our second story is a really fascinating piece from Physics World and covers some of the most impactful spin-out technologies generated by big deep science projects. One of the most famous examples of this is the World Wide Web. That's right, the internet wasn't invented by industry, but was instead the brainchild of Tim Berners-Lee, a scientist working at the Particle Accelerator Facility, CERN. But in addition to spin-outs from particle physics, the article focuses on fusion, an area that a lot of people have an idea of as very blue sky and far off, but it's actively generating value from its technologies today. A good example of this is the high temperature superconducting magnets, which are being used to develop compact fusion tokamaks. As well as being applied to fusion though, high temperature superconductors could be applied to space thrusters, proton beam therapy, and motors and generators for wind turbines and planes. As a result, a report from Future Market Insights estimated the high temperature superconducting market was valued at 3.3 billion US dollars in 2023. And fusion companies are capitalizing on the importance of this technology. FIA member Tokamak Energy, for example, recently formed the spin-out Tokamak Energy Magnetics Corp, focusing on non-fusion applications of high-temperature superconductors. And they already have a contract with the U.S. Department of Energy to build silent propulsion systems for submarines. So, next time someone tells you fusion has no practical impact on the world, they are forgetting about the real impact of fusion technologies today. In fact, a recent report from the UK government claims that firms spun out from the country's public sector has raised a total of 5.1 billion of investment and created more than 7,000 new jobs over the last four decades. Three, stopping off the wall behavior in fusion reactors. Our next story comes from physics.org, but it's also been featured in outlets like Interesting Engineering. 
It's a technical piece that covers work from the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory on a method of increasing a fusion device's performance known as boronization. But for context, what is boronization? Well, one thing that can really harm the performance of a magnetic fusion device is the surrounding wall. And that's because if the exhausted plasma is too hot or too intense, small bits of the wall can actually be released back into the plasma. This can contaminate the core of the machine and radiate loads of power away, cooling the plasma down and decreasing the rate of fusion reactions. One powerful way of preventing this is by coating the wall, which is typically made of a metal like tungsten, with boron, a process known as boronization. Now, boronization has been shown to prevent the release of tungsten into the plasma in previous machines, but the process of deposition of boron and how it impacts the wall is still not very well understood. So, in this new story, researchers at the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory developed a new modeling framework to better understand how to inject and control boron inside tokamaks. According to Florian Effenberg, a staff research physicist at Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory, we've developed a new way to understand how injected boron material behaves in a fusion plasma and how it interacts with the walls of fusion reactors to keep them in good condition while they are operating. 4. Japan's tokamak sets world record, achieves plasma volume of 160 cubic meters. This next story comes from Interesting Engineering and covers a new record from a world-class fusion device. The device in question is JT60SA, a tokamak located in Naka, Japan and operated by Japan's National Institutes for Quantum and Science and Technology. It's the successor to the tokamak JT60U, which was operated between 1991 and 2008 but with the key addition of superconducting magnets operated at roughly minus 265 degrees Celsius. Those superconducting magnets are the S in SA. Now, JT60SA only began operation earlier this year, but it's already broken the global fusion record for the highest volume of experimental fusion plasma. The record is for 160 cubic meters of plasma, which vastly surpasses the previous record of 100 cubic meters. Though this record isn't a headline of record fusion energy or anything like that, it's an important step towards commercial fusion energy. After all, some plant-like tokamaks of the future, such as ITER, are set to create plasmas of roughly 800 cubic meters in volume. Now, this record should be nothing new for Japan's National Institutes for Quantum and Science and Technology, since JT60U, the predecessor machine, still holds many records in fusion, including the world record for triple product, the most important measure for fusion performance. So the upgraded version of this machine is definitely one to keep your eyes on. I wouldn't be surprised if there are more record-breaking results in JT60SA's future. Right, well that's all for our main stories today, but of course we have some bonuses, and our bonuses are two videos. The first is a recently released series on YouTube entitled Harnessing Star Power. It's a great overview documentary on the need for fusion and the path to deployment, and features FIA CEO Andrew Holland and Professor Dennis White of the MIT Department of Nuclear Science and Engineering. Finally, we have a video from the Wall Street Journal overviewing China's accelerated efforts in fusion development and how the US is trying to stay competitive. I recommend you check those videos out. Right, well that's all for Fusion News this week. I really hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please feel free as always to leave a like, comment, or follow our different socials. And as always, if any of those articles interested you in particular, their links will be in the description. We appreciate the support everyone, and see you next week.